Hey everyone, I'm back with the Open Lathe project, and this video is going to be all about the chucks. Before we mount these to the Open Lathe itself, uh, we're going to have to do a little work on these things. Um, I get these chuck assemblies from Automation Technologies Inc. This here is the 100 millimeter fourth axis uh, CNC. Um, I like this a lot because uh, it has this uh, nice little cover on the back. Um, it uh, it will accept a 30 millimeter bore in the chuck, and uh, the gearing in the back can be changed. So I'm just opening this up here. Uh, it comes with a chuck key and also some outside jaws. And what we're going to do is um, disassemble the chuck, clean it, put it back together, and then change the gearing on the on the in the back and redo a little bit of the electrical wiring. Uh, here's some of the outside chuck, uh, outside jaws for the chuck. Uh, I was able to chuck up 70 millimeter tubing uh, on the prototype, and it seemed to seemed to handle it just fine. I have no idea what these little screws are for. Uh, somebody, if you figure it out, let me know, please. So the first thing we need to do is remove the jaws from the chuck. This is pretty easy. Just uh, loosen the jaws until they disengage from the chuck and pop them out. The jaws do have an order that they go back into the chuck, but uh, don't worry, they are numbered. After you've removed the jaws, grab a 14 millimeter wrench. Uh, this is probably going to have to be a, uh, a fixed wrench. Um, the, uh, the adjustable wrenches typically don't fit back in here. Um, this is a little bit tedious, um, but uh, but easy. One thing I like to do is take a scribe and mark the back plate and the chuck, just to make sure uh, I've got it back in the same spot. Um, just take the time to do that, and uh, should go back nice and easy. You're going to need to loosen all the bolts kind of at the same time, so just go around, give each bolt a, you know, five or six turns, and uh, then go on to the next one. Once the chuck is off the assembly, we're going to want to remove this uh, this black piece of plastic that's on the back. Uh, it's not really going to serve any purpose for us, and um, at worst it could get hot and melt. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's made of, but um, we don't need it. Uh, if you're not going to bore the chuck out, you can leave it if you like. Um, the stock bore on these chucks is 20 millimeters. I had I took these to a machinist and um, had them bored out to 30 millimeters. Uh, it's really it's really really handy to have them do that. Uh, you know, probably only cost a hundred bucks or so. So just undo the undo those screws and pull this thing off. You see down into the chuck. There's the uh, the gearing and uh, a little bit of grease and a bit of dirt. I think when they're making these things, they don't they don't clean them very well. Um, and there's some some dirt and dust left over from grinding. Now I have to add that this is not something I did on my prototype lathe, um, but since I'm building this for someone, I'm definitely going to clean these up. The first thing we're going to do uh, to break down the chuck is take out these retention pins. And the retention pins just hold in this little pinion gear here, and uh, it just, just pops right out, nice and easy. And I put it into my little, I don't have a parts washer, so it's just a little Ziploc tub and uh, WD-40 for me. Just go around and take all of those out. The next thing we need to do is get the ring gear and, and scroll wheel out of there. I've just got a mallet and a, and a piece of wood and I'm just going around and lightly tapping uh, on each face until this thing pops out. I did end up having to find a different tool to finish the job uh, 
but whatever you use just make sure it's wood don't go hammering on this thing with a flathead screwdriver uh, it's a quick way to screw this thing up so there we are I think popped out nice and easy and uh, we'll just throw everything into our bucket here and start hosing it down so there's no real special tips or tricks to this part uh, it's just plain old cleaning I'm using the WD-40 to rinse and break up the grease and then I get in there with my uh, with my shop towels and really really scrub it out um, use those kind of heavy-duty blue shop paper towels and they seem to work really well most important thing is just to be thorough uh, you want to clean the chuck jaws, the ring gear, uh, the scroll. Uh, make sure you get down into the scroll on the on the back of that ring gear real well and into the teeth of the uh, of the jaws. After you've got everything cleaned and rinsed you can move on to reassembly. Now at this point when the chuck's broken down you can uh, bore have a machinist bore out the chuck head for you. You can see right here that the spindle through hole is uh, it's, it's about 30 millimeters and uh, the hole in the chuck is only 20. And you've got a little bit of room uh, to take take a couple millimeters off there and this is a, a good point to do that. Uh, I've done it a couple ways. I've done it this way with the thing completely broken down and I've done it partially reassembled where the pinion uh, and rings are back into the chuck and uh, it didn't seem to matter too much. Um, the one thing if, if you don't do it while it's fully assembled you'll have to go and uh, those pinion gears have a little dowel on them and you're just going to need to take it to a sander and, and sand that off. Um, if you uh, give it to them partially assembled without the jaws in there uh, the the cutting tool will remove the ends of the dowels on their own so it's up to you um, you can partially reassemble it or you can just do it like this uh, if you have if you know a machinist um, or you are capable of doing the work yourself it might be a little cheaper um, just lightly tap that uh, that ring in there and get it seated it should actually fall into place pretty good if, uh, if you do it right after that ring is all set in place, you can start replacing the pinion gears. Uh, just push them in, uh, set them up, line up the retaining uh, screw or dowel there, and just screw it back in. Um, and you just want to engage it. It uh, usually they're they're nice and loose in there. It's not a big deal. Just get them in. Grab the chuck key and give the thing a little crank back and forth. Just make sure it's working all right. Yep, yeah, should should be no problem. Uh, now it's now it's a good time to put a little grease in those gears too. Just really, really, really lightly. Uh, it doesn't take much. So we're going to put these chuck jaws back into the chuck, and they do have a specific order they go in. And uh, you can see that the little lines there are staggered uh, where the scroll engages into the ch into the uh, chuck uh, jaws. And you can see on the side there's numbers stamped into them and uh, for some reason they've got there's a 1, 2, and 3 and then there's a bunch of other numbers um, but it should be apparent uh, if you just check it out what uh, which one's which. And I don't know if you can see here but as this as you turn the uh, turn the chuck key the scroll is moving and you can see that there's a start. There's a place where it's a spiral scroll and it has a little start spot. And the jaw labeled number one is the first jaw that you want that to engage. So find my little start spot. I'll put my jaw in there and uh, give a little pressure and turn the key to engage it. And I'm sorry I'm a little off screen here on that one. Um, you can just put the second one in there. Same thing, give it a little pressure and you'll feel it start to close. And number 
3. And uh, again, I'm sorry I'm a little off screen, but uh, you play with it a little bit, it will become quite apparent uh, what needs to happen. It's a nice, nice shiny chuck. Jaws are working great. And uh, there you go. Once everything's working how you want it, just mount that thing back up. So find your notch on the back plate and line it up with your chuck. There's my notch. It's a little tricky sometimes to get this first bolt engaged. Everything's kind of floating on there. Uh, it's not so easy to turn with your finger. Uh, sometimes you can get it to engage, uh, and then, uh, but most of the time, you might need a might need a wrench for that. Once the first one's on there, it's it's a lot easier. And you just go ahead and do the reverse of uh, what you did taking it off. Just kind of give each bolt a few turns, couple turns, half a dozen turns at a time. And uh, just, just go around and do that. If you try to engage one bolt and get, get one bolt all the way in, it, it's just not going to fit. Um, it's going to bind up on the corner somewhere. So just take your time and go around and do each one little by little. So as you get to the end, just make sure everything's evenly tight. You don't want these things to be like super Rambo tight, uh, but they need to be pretty snug. So hopefully you're watching this uh, all the way through before you start doing things. And um, you kind of have the option to do this first, middle, or last. Uh, what we're going to do is take off the back plate and change the gearing and change the belt and then uh, change the plug on the end of the stepper motor. Um, so you can do this first before you screw with the chuck or you can do it in the middle um, with the chuck off which is probably how I'm going to do it in the future. The chuck just adds a little bit more weight to the assembly and um, you know it's just easier to manipulate if it's lighter but also really no big deal. Uh, so go ahead and take the screws off and take this little shielding off of there and what we're going to need to do is change the pulley and that's going to require us to uh, take the stepper motor off and there are four bolts holding this thing on and you're going to want to take your ball end wrench and just kind of loosen each one something to remember when buying Chinese equipment uh, some of the bolts can be loose, some of the connections can be loose I think I put my wrench right into one of these things and it was just, it was already loose, it was just kind of hanging there. Flip this thing over and the stepper motor just kind of flops out there. And uh, you can throw that belt away or reuse it, I don't know if you have a project. Um, I never have a use for them. So we want to take off the, the current gear on the motor and replace it with our one that we got from Automation Direct. Uh, link should be down in the description there. Uh, the Ziploc bags that they send these things in are a bit of a joke. Uh, just save yourself the humiliation and rip it open. So this is uh, this has two set screws. Just line the, the the motor has a flat in the shaft. Just line one of them up with the flat in the shaft. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you're gonna have to put the motor through the housing. Uh, through the frame before you do this because the, the pulley is just too big to fit through it. And again we have uh, we have a, a nice Ziploc style bag that doesn't uh, that doesn't zip or doesn't unzip. Watch this. Oh yeah. yeah just tear that thing open. Uh, so this uh, this package comes with three which is nice. Uh, we need two of them, so you have a spare. They just come like that. Uh, it's pretty handy. And just put that thing around uh, both of those pulleys 
as best you can. It might be a little tight, but they should fit. Sometimes you can just kind of get it caught in the edge of the pulley there, and, and as you spin it, it'll it'll engage. Um, and then just kind of line it up. Just make sure it's spinning right. Line it up and get get one of those screws in there. And what I'm doing right here, I'm just kind of looking to see where the belt tracks as I spin it. And uh, maybe I want to pull the pulley in or out just a little bit just to kind of change the tracking. I don't really want the pulley rubbing on anything. It's a, The pulley is a little bit skinnier than the stock pulley it comes with. Um, but it's it's no big deal. It engages just fine. You see I've gone a little too far there. I'm just kind of playing with it a little bit. And I'll, I'll push that in a little. You might need to jiggle the motor a little bit to get it to fit right back into the frame. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with this one, but uh, that's, I take it as a good sign that the, the tolerances are tight. I just screw it all back in, just like you took it apart. After everything's nice and snug, we can go back to the, the pulleys and check the tracking again. Uh, hopefully the, the pulley hasn't too, moved too far on the shaft. Um, that looks to be okay. I'm going to just pull this out just a tad and try to center it a little more on that gear. Um, you know, the, it's a little, the belt's a little skinnier, so you've got a lot of leeway. Just kind of try to center it up and keep it off the side walls. And the last thing on this step is to tighten those set screws down. There's two of them. Just make sure they get uh, get them nice and tight. Uh, but I will I will caution you on uh, on these smaller uh, smaller wrenches. Uh, if you wrench too hard, it can be easy to to snap these things. Um, they're, the metal's hard, but it's brittle. And um, ask me how I found that out. And there we are. I'm pretty happy with that one. Now it's time to deal with the plug end. Uh, these plug ends are okay, but uh, you know, it just they look cheap, they feel cheap, and uh, in the end, if you want to use these, you're going to have to end up doing some soldering, and I kind of wanted to avoid that. So I did get some plug ends from Automation Direct and they're, uh, everything screws in, they look really nice, that's nice nice fit and finish. Um, so just grab a small Phillips head screwdriver and take these uh, take these screws off. There's a couple of them here and there, there's there's the, the clamp on the end and then there's one little retaining screw on the side of this. That's It's tiny, and yeah, just pull that out there. So those things are soldered on, those wires are soldered on, just grab your wire clippers and cut them right off and pull this guy off as well and I'll probably cut that back a little bit a little bit later we'll see these are the M12 female connectors uh, should be pretty easy to tell them apart we have two of these um, and then there's another two, and those both have leads on them. Uh, the male M12 male bulkhead connectors have leads on them. So just take this guy apart, and uh, and I think we're going to set it aside here. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing a little better. Uh, before we hook this thing up, we need to get some of these parts, uh, the wires through some of these parts, uh, or else we're going to have a. We're just going to take the whole thing apart again. Uh, there's there's probably this thing's made up probably of uh, I think probably five parts. There's a kind of a screw at one end, and then kind of a, a cable gland, and also um, a piece of rubber in there, and uh, it just kind of makes things nice and you know I don't know if they're quite all the way watertight, but uh, they're uh, it, they're they're nice. They're dust resistant at, at the very least. Um, so I'm just cutting back some of this cable wrap here um, to expose more of the wire um, and uh, 
just going to strip these back a little bit. See, so you could strip them back probably, you know, three sixteenths of an inch. Um, you know, you'll be able to tell. You can stick the wire into the terminal and kind of get a good idea of how much you need to strip back. Uh, you know, a couple millimeters, three sixteenths of an inch, eighth of an inch. Um, you know, definitely not more than a quarter, but but it should be pretty pretty apparent what you're doing there. Now you can strip these wires back and get all this stuff on there or um, put everything together and then strip the wires. It, it doesn't matter too much. Um, this little white piece takes a, you know, it's not the easiest thing. Um, it's not difficult. It's just uh, tends to snag on that wire wrap. Uh, this larger piece has a, I don't know, a little, little piece of rubber on there that kind of keeps the dust out and uh, maybe even some moisture. Just just undo that thing. Just get your get your uh, screwdriver out and pull it out and uh, things will go a lot easier for you. Uh, you may need to shove it through a little bit but uh, it's not going to happen in the larger piece all that easy. After we get this put together, we're going to need to wire this up. Uh, we need to figure out, the wires are paired, and we need to figure out which wire is with which wire. I'm using the Cheapo Harbor Freight multimeter. I have nicer ones, but I just wanted to show uh, the cheap one uh, that you may have lying around or have to get. We want to set this to uh, the resistance, measure resistance, and that is the Greek symbol omega. If you touch the uh, two leads together and pull them apart, uh, what you see when you touch them together means that there's continuity. Uh, you may have a multimeter that has a continu separate continuity tester, in which case it's just an audible beep. Um, but I'm going to go through here and test these wires for you and show, show you how it's done. So I'm holding one of my probes onto the black wire, and then I reach over and touch the red wire. I get nothing touch the blue wire, I get nothing, and then touch the green wire, and look, there we go, we've got continuity. So I know that the, uh, the green and the black wires are paired, I'm just going to twist them together. And uh, I'm going to check my blue and my red, and there we go, it's correct. Uh, now, uh, the way these are connected will determine the direction of the motor, the way the direction the motor spins. Uh, we're not really concerned with that at the moment. We're just going to uh, attach them to this end in an order so we know which, which, uh, which wire goes to what. And uh, fortunately for us, on the end of this, uh, these terminals, they're, they're numbered. So I'm just going to stick black in there and in position one and then put, uh, put green in position two and uh, so on and so forth. Once you've got your wires all screwed in, you can reassemble the housing. And it's real simple. Uh, everything just screws right together. I uh, just push all that stuff together and uh, voila. Really nice termination much better than the stock. This video is running a little long, so in the next video I'll show you how to finish off the chuck.